I'm not trying to push you away. It sounds like you are. Except at night when you steal my sheets. Wow. Hopefully we can get past this. Hi there, I'm Mindy Jensen. And I'm Carl Jensen. And this is the Mindy and Carl on Money Podcast, where we talk about what happens after you reach financial independence. Why do we call this show Mindy on Money? Because we can. Wow. (laughs) This episode of Mindy and Carl on Money doesn't actually feature Mindy and Carl. Instead, it features some of our friends sharing their thoughts on the most important financial decision you can make. But before we get started, let's take a quick break. Today's episode is sponsored by our Facebook group. We have a Facebook group? Ugh, can you please keep up? It's like you never listen to me. What? We, oh. <laughs> That's right, Carl. Today's episode of Mindy. And Carl. On Money is sponsored by our Facebook group, which you can find at facebook.com slash groups slash Mindy on Money. And we would love for you to join so you can jump in and have extracurricular conversations about all the things that we talk about on this podcast. There's no Carl in the Facebook group name. There isn't. It's It's just Mindy on Money. It's okay. It would just cause confusion. People would. would get the C and the K mixed up and they'd go to something else and yeah. it, it wouldn't be good. Okay. For our esteemed listeners, yesterday on the show, Carl and I gave our opinion about why we think that your partner is the most important financial decision that you can make. Today, we have a few friends joining us who to share why they agree with us and one who has a counterpoint. Thanks, Doug. First up is our friend Rakesh. Hi, Carl and Mindy. This is Rakesh here, and my partner's name is Unnati. I have known my wife for last 17 years, and we have been married for last 14 years. We met each other at work, and uh, I was the one who proposed her because I was attracted towards her because of her simplicity and because of her innocent smile. We actually never designed our life how it will be in the future. We just went with the flow. We have always been on the same page on money because it was just me who handled uh, most of our money decisions. But I always informed her whether we are buying a new car, when I am sending money to my parents or sending money to her parents, buying an apartment for my parents things like that. We have always been on the same page and we have a joint account where our salary is credited and marriage can go in either direction. It can take you up or down depending on your partner. So if you are not on the same page, then it will really break your marriage. And our philosophy of marriage is that We should have open discussion about everything and never go to bed angry. So, yeah, we have been doing it for the past 14 years. Hopefully, we will be able to do it for another 30, 40 years. Thank you so much. So this is super important. I cannot highlight this comment enough. Carl and I never go to sleep in different beds out of anger. We might go to sleep in different beds because he's sick or I'm sick, but never out of anger. And we kiss goodnight and say I love you every single night before bed for the last 22 years. Except tonight when you will actually be sleeping in a different bed. But that's not out of anger. That's because I'm going to Denver and you're staying in Longmont. Yeah, you get to have fun and I get to stay home and make sure our kids don't kill each other. Yeah. Fun. That's fun too. (laughs) Or not. Sometimes you might be really angry with your spouse. Sometimes you might want to hold on to that anger, but that's counterproductive. And I know I have said this before, and you will hear me say it again. It isn't you against your partner in this life. It is the two of you against the world. So never go to bed in anger. Thank you, Rakesh, for those words of wisdom. Moving on, our friend Lauren. Hi, I'm Lauren Boland, and I'm the creator of a retirement calculator called cfiresim.com. And Mindy and Carl asked me to answer a few questions on this week's podcast. So here I am. First question, how long have you been with your partner? 
I've been with my partner, Elizabeth, for 21 years now, actually. That's actually kind of interesting because I'm 42. I guess it's been half my life. Wild. We've been married for 16 years and we met in college. She was literally the girl next door. So that's how long we've, we've been together. Question number three, did you talk about money before marriage or commitment no, we didn't really. I guess we kind of lucked into being on the same page because we were pretty young. We didn't really talk about that. And I think we got lucky. Question four, how, have you always been on the same page about money? I think we've been mostly on the same page, probably within the same sphere of different options. I think that that's important. I think you don't have to necessarily be exactly on the same page, but having the same sort of general values about money and the direction and goals you want to go uh, for is important. So if, as long as you're within the same general area, that's great. If you have one person that's way off on the spectrum of like spendthrift and someone who's a super saver, I think it's clearly not going to work out in the long term. And why not spare yourself from problems down the road? And the last question is, we think your partner is the most important financial decision you'll ever make. Do you agree? I do agree. I do think it's a tricky thing. Culturally, we don't usually talk about money very often, especially before commitment. And when you're even younger, you it, there's less of a chance you're talking about it. I think a lot of people who are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and have had a long part time partner, and it's been super successful, they probably were luckily on the same page financially, it just so happened to be pure luck. I think for us that that's totally true. And I do think it's super important. And the more we talk about it in society today, makes makes it much easier to get past that money taboo. Thanks a lot, Mindy. And Carl. Okay. Now being able to have those difficult conversations with your partner is so, so, so important. The more we talk about it makes it easier to get past the money taboo. That's a direct quote. Again, you should not be afraid to bring up these difficult topics with your partner. And if you are, that's a symptom of a deeper problem. Yeah, sure is. Having difficult conversations is part of being an adult. And if you can't have these difficult conversations with your partner, why are you with your partner? Next up, we have Tom. All right. Hey, I'm Tom. I'm the Frugal Gay. Questions. How long have I been with my partner? I have been with my partner for seven years. We're actually just inching past our seven year and we have been married for six years. Do we talk about money before getting married and commitment? I mean, we talked about money before we even met. We had lots of buildup. We met on Growler. We were just meet to hook up. I'm not going to lie to you. I did lie at my wedding and said that we were meeting for a date, but it was like a special date. And did we talk about money before that? Absolutely. First of all, I overslept. So then we had three weeks between that original date setting where I stood him up to where we actually met. And yeah, we had money conversations. We were on the same page. He did not carry any debt at the time. He had a job. This was his goal. He was getting his master's at the time. This is what he's going for. This is what he wants his job to make. And this is what he wants to do. So yeah, I think talking about money freely, especially at the beginning, is key. I did that a lot when I was dating. And if I have someone who's working against me financially... It's not someone that I want to continue to see because I had my goals of building this real estate and doing this and my resale business and, and all that. And I want someone who is on the same page with me. Have you always been on the same page about money? Yes and no. And I'm going to walk you through a recent incident, which I saw the writing on the wall like two or three months ago. My husband decided to go ahead and save up and buy a car in cash, which is awesome. I love that he was able to go buy a 2024 car in cash. However, I saw the writing on the wall and I said, you know, if you go do this, this is going to drain everything. And we've got the property tax and we've got the car tax and the insurance is going to shoot up. And of course, my husband's like, that's great because I need a car and I want to drive this one and I need it to have these features and I want this and this and this and I'm going to start driving to work. So he went and did what he was going to do. 
and like clockwork, the insurance bill comes around and it's $600 more. And now my husband does not have that extra $600. So that bill fell back on me while he's sitting out in the other room knitting from like all the knitting supplies he insists on buying on Amazon every day because he sees money and they're growing. And he's like, hey, I'm going to buy more knitting things and I'm going to knit myself a car seat for my new fancy car. So yes, we're on the same page. He understands where he went wrong. He understands why he didn't have that money. However, sometimes he just really doesn't care and it falls back on me. And that's okay as long as it's not every day or every week. Because there are times where I have definitely been like, writing out checks and I'm like, oh, where is this money? Why am I short? And, and he's definitely stepped up and helped me in those spots too. So I like having a spouse that understands that and understands my goals. And I like having him as my, my fallback when he spends too much on a car and knitting things, or I spend too much buying mascara that's not going to sell that quickly. So Financially, we are on the same page. Uh, I quit my job at 39. I have a goal of him quitting his job at 39. He's a few years younger than me. Uh, and I think that we are on track for him to be able to do that. Do I think a partner is the most financially important decision you can ever make? 100%. There's a reason that I was single into my 30s because I didn't want to meet someone and have them pull down the years and years of work that I had already been laying the groundwork on. I had been saving and buying rentals and working towards financial independence since I was in my mid-20s. And I'm like, all right, I'm done with credit card debt. I'm done with this. I don't want to go to another employer. So yes, uh, marry wrong and you can suffer for years. And I see people in it who are closeted spenders and closeted savers. And you don't want someone who's going to work against you. And immediately, that first meeting, when we were sitting there at that first Brazilian Steakhouse was our first our first dinner. I knew that we were on the same page financially. When he was getting his master's, he was going to school debt-free, he was paying as he went, he was working in a food court. I could see the groundwork that he was laying was very similar to the groundwork that I was laying. He was not over-leveraging and car debt and credit card debt. And I knew that that made us a little bit more compatible than some of the other dates that I had been on. So yes, 100%. I do believe that my spouse buys way too much on Amazon, especially knitting things. However, I do think that he sees the bigger picture and he knows when enough is enough. He's not quietly building up credit card debt. He's not quietly working against me, which I see in some of these relationships. So thank you for letting me share my story. I'm Tom. I'm the Frugal Gay at the Frugal Gay 11 on TikTok, on Twitter, on X, on Instagram, on Facebook. Thanks, guys. Okay, something Tom said, you don't want someone working against you, is such a powerful statement. It's so true, but it's also not something you think about on a daily basis. However, if you do have someone working against you openly or almost worse in secret, that can derail your goals and plans, but also cut you to the core and make your life absolutely miserable. You need somebody who is on the same page with you. You need somebody who is a true partner. I'm just saying there are times when you work against me. Like when? Like when you steal the sheets and I become cold to the core. Well, you know, get stronger. You pull all the sheets to your side of the bed, so all your sheets are actually on the floor, and I'm there freezing, shaking. Get stronger. Look at my big, huge biceps. Show me yours. Wow. I don't think sleeping in the cold makes you stronger. Oh, well, maybe you should get stronger and pull them back. <laughs> anyway, next we have Bill. Hello, Mindy and Carl, and thank you for inviting me on your new show. To answer the question, why is your partner the most important financial decision that you'll ever make? Well, I agree with you. It is the most important financial decision you'll ever make. A lot of people probably wouldn't because people like to look at relationships emotionally and not financially or as a business, as a, quote, partnership often is as well. So you have a few questions to ask me and you wanted to know, how long I've been with my partner? Well, that's over 25 years. We met back in residency. We're both physicians in the middle of the night, and folks that saw us meet said it was magic. And I agree that it was magic. 
but it still took me four years to marry her, which is okay. It was a long vetting process. At any rate, did we talk about money before marriage and during our courtship? No, we really didn't. We talked about spending it, and we're both natural spenders. We didn't get any education on money growing up in our family. Nobody took us aside and said, look at your future self and save for your future self. Max out your 401k. Make a budget. Focus on money as a goal, to as a tool, really, to create your best life, the life that you want to lead. So we did not talk about money. Have we been, always been on the same page? Well, yes, we were spenders, but then we woke up around 50 and realized that saving was the game, saving was the key, and we needed to get to the point where we could retire. We needed to catch up to Phi. That's our platform, which we have a podcast and a Facebook group, and very robust. We encourage folks who feel late and need to engage in this conversation about money to join us. And we'll talk about topics much like you and uh, Carl are talking about, Mindy. We're going to have you on our show to talk about these topics. So it's a collaborative process. So why do I think my partner is the most important financial decision I'll make? Well, why do relationships break up? money. Why do people divorce? Money. What is it all about when you dissolve a partnership or dissolve a business? It's important on the back end. Why is it not as important on the front end? You know, if you smoke or you drink or you gamble, is that going to be a deal breaker for a relationship? Well, for me, it might be. I don't want to marry a smoker. They'd have to quit and change their values before we got married. And the same with drinking and gambling. I wouldn't want that. So as far as money goes, you know, what if your partner has huge six-figure debt? What if their approach and habits with money aren't healthy? I think that we need to open their eyes, if we can, to the better way that the Phi community has found and hopefully they can reform their habits uh, before you engage in a business partnership with them uh, because you're going to take on their debt. You'll own it and uh, you'll both be paying it off together or accumulating it together. So don't live a paycheck to paycheck lifestyle. Don't let lifestyle inflation carry you away. It certainly helps if somebody is a natural saver and more frugal to enter a relationship and you can meet in the middle when there are opposites in the spending or saving domain that attract, which, you know, does happen. At any rate, I want to thank Carl and Mindy for having me on their show. I want to thank them for the message that they're getting out there. We're going to have them on our show at Catching Up to Fi to talk about much these same issues. So thanks again, Mindy and Carl, for all that you do in this community. And I look forward to talking to you again soon takes away a huge stressor in your relationship. Whatever your relationship is, your romantic relationship, your business relationships, having that giant hurdle out of the way is so important. Being on the same page, but I'm not sure I want to be in the same bed if you continue to steal all of my sheets. You have to sleep in the same bed. It's the law. Wow. We'll find a way around this. No, we won't. Sounds like a business opportunity. This is a problem. Like maybe we have to sew the sheets to the bed? I don't know. We could get two twin mattresses and put them there and each make our own twin bed and then have like one big cover over the top. I bet what would happen then is you would infiltrate my side in the middle of the night and steal my covers anyway. That probably would happen. (laughs) And finally, we have Doug who has a contrary opinion. Doug always has to be a contrarian. (laughs) Thanks for nothing, Doug. Hi, I'm Doug Cunnington. I have a podcast called The Doug Show about affiliate marketing and side hustles, and I have a personal YouTube channel as well. Plus, Carl and I have a podcast together, and many do consider me the other better half for Carl. We've been together for 17 years and married for 14. We met back in Atlanta, where we're from. We actually met on eHarmony, which was pretty novel back in 2007. We did go to Georgia Tech, but we never crossed paths there. We didn't really talk about money very much before commitment or getting married, at least nothing too specific. 
we weren't always on the same page about money, though we lined up more and more over the years. So I think now we're reading probably from the same book, but maybe we're still not on the same page for everything. Early on, I had some lingering credit card debt, like a rolling balance, but technically I could pay it all off. It was kind of a weird situation. I don't even know why I was doing that. My wife was and is very awesome with finances, budgeting, cash flow, anything related to finance. She is very good at it and very good at tracking. So she 100% helped me stop spending mindlessly and save more money. And it was really a turning point. One other thing to note, like I said, we're not always on the same page exactly. I really have a growth and abundance mindset. In 2015, I got laid off from my corporate job and started my online business. Those two things helped me a lot deal with the uncertainty. My wife, she craves certainty. So when we look at financial independence and maybe retiring early, I'm pretty comfortable with uncertainty in the future and just projections and having to be flexible. And this is the clash. My wife really does want certainty. And I can state my one-sided opinion here because she's not here. Aiming for nearly 100% certainty pretty much guarantees that you're going to oversave. You're going to have too much money. And this is kind of where we clash. Your partner can be the most important decision, but everyone's situation is different. So I could cherry pick some examples to disprove it. And maybe that's more interesting because I'm sure everyone's going to agree the way this question is phrased. But for me, my wife did change the trajectory for us financially very quickly after we got married or engaged. I can't quite remember when. Earlier, I gave an example about how we disagree about risk and certainty, but overall, we have the same values about saving and spending. We have similar views about spending on cars versus vacations versus eating out and cooking at home. So from a day-to-day -day perspective, it makes it pretty easy for us to agree. And I will give you the quick example of when maybe your partner doesn't matter as much. Your decision to smoke cigarettes might lead to health issues, which could cost a lot of money in the long run. Or maybe your decision to not exercise and eat an unhealthy diet will also lead to health issues in the long run. At that point, maybe your partner doesn't matter as much financially, but these decisions, which are completely unrelated to finances directly, will make an impact. Or Maybe you decide to go to a very expensive college in an expensive city for an advanced degree in an industry that doesn't have a high likelihood of a high income. So at that point, maybe your partner doesn't matter as much as the decision to go to an expensive school and rack up a huge amount of debt. As far as finding like-minded potential partners, I've been out of the game too long, but I would suggest in-person events where you could spend a long period of time, a quality time period with people that probably have similar values. If you go to an event that has a barrier to entry, maybe it costs something, maybe people have to travel to, people want to be there. And it's a pre-vetted group of people that have similar financial values, especially if you go to an event that I love, like Economy or a Camp Fi, those have the right people, the people that you wanna hang out with and meet with. So Doug gave some examples of when the partner isn't necessarily the most important decision. And he gave examples that specifically affect your health. I think these are good points. Carl, what do you think? I think they are good points, but one of his examples is smoking. And I don't think I'd, be with someone who smoked in the first place. That would be a filter for me, not a cigarette filter. But uh, <laughs> It would be a cigarette filter. <laughs> That's a pun. That was a good one. I know. It would, <laughs> it would be a life filter because we wouldn't even get to the conversation about money because I don't really want to be with someone who does that. Right. But back to the original question, we think that your spouse is the most important financial decision you can make. I think Doug isn't necessarily being contrarian. I think he's just adding to the point. You want somebody who fits with you 
and somebody who smokes may not be somebody who fits with you if you don't smoke. Somebody who gambles, to use Bill's example, may not be somebody who fits with you if you don't gamble. We don't gamble. That doesn't make us better than other people. That just means that we don't gamble. But if you were somebody who gambled a lot, I would have an issue with that. If you gambled every once in a while and didn't lose the house, I probably wouldn't have such a big issue with it. Okay. I guess I'm coming around to seeing what Doug has to say. And I'm thinking about this in the spectrum of sheet stealers, which isn't quite as bad as smoking, but it's... Wow. It might not be that far away either. Wow. Hopefully we can get past this. Yeah, hopefully. Do we have any marriage counselors (laughs) in the audience or bedding designers? Okay, so thank you for listening to this bonus episode. We would love to hear your opinion in our Facebook group, which is, again, at facebook.com slash groups slash Mindy on Money. Would love to hear what you think about the most important financial decision you can make. And also, if you don't agree that your spouse is, what do you think is? One other important note. If you're watching on YouTube, Mindy, your face was blocking the bowl a little bit. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll move oh, over. Okay, that, that's better. Or else we'll just move it. Hold on. Wow. I can't believe that's more important than okay. having a cohesive conversation. Okay, go back to where you were. I like being close to you. Clearly. I'm not trying to push you away. It sounds like you are. Except at night when you steal my shoes. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to go back and revisit that never sleep out out of the bed in separate beds in anger. (laughs) That's bullshit. Oh, (laughs) this is a family show. That was S H E E T. Oh my goodness. And if anybody wants to email Mindy at Mindy on and commiserate with me on Carl's terrible jokes, you are welcome to do that. (laughs) Yes. Send your bullshit Mindy's way. Yes. And you can email Carl at MindyOnMoney.com if you want to harass him for all of the harassing he does to me. And that's Carl at MindyOnMoney.com. Yep. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks for listening. Ooh, now let's hit record. Next up, we have Bill. No, we don't. Next up, we have Tom. Oops. Next up, we have Tom. Yeah, you're being distracting right now, in fact. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) 